А це безпосередньо Василь Брага, ваше бурне оплески, екзекутив-директор Асоціації креативних індустрій Молдови. В минулому році ця людина запустила Game Dave, девелоп в трьох вузах Молдови. І в нього вже більше 600 учнів. І е, він з вами поділиться своїми найкращими інсайтами і можливостями того, що відбувається, як відбувається в, е, у наших сусідів е, з Молдови. Ви людина дуже креативна, дуже цікава, харизматична, сказав би. І тому я віддаю йому мікрофон. Василь, у вашій увазі вся аудиторія. Бурні облески! Thank you, thank you a lot. Так, sorry, uh, first thank you. Only because of you, like, we are living our lives back in Chanel without any changes. Thank you a lot for you being strong. This is important for us, and this is why today I'm here and not in Chanel. Uh, firstly. Uh, second one, let's start. Like, I don't know Ukrainian at all. This is why I'm speaking English. I think it's okay. It's cool for you. Good. Okay. Why this topic? Why not games? What not game design? Why not narrative something? Why interactive storytelling in general? Like back on hundred years ago, started um, like seventy-five actually. Um, all the Soviet region started to be one like another and the possibility to tell a story disappeared like we are not used in the eastern europe to actually tell a story and i saw this not only in games i saw this in movies uh, i saw it a lot in books and uh, we are trying to change it like now we have 600 kids wanting to make games. They know a lot about mechanics. They know a lot about programming. But they actually don't understand what the story is about. And even if they understand, they know more about linear stories. What's the difference between uh, interactive type of storytelling and a linear story? We'll not delve very Mm, very like deep today will be a little bit shallow, a little bit broad, but we'll speak what's the interactive story about, where this uh, story start uh, to be built, and let's go. And before speaking about interactive storytelling, we need to understand two bicycle things, like we have Interaction and storytelling. What's interaction about? We, uh, almost all of us, are thinking about the interaction about, like about the reaction. What, what, what I'm speaking about. Like, you are doing something to your game, your interactive installation, something like you are doing, and it reacts. But it's not enough. The, in the interaction is actually a loop, a cycle. Then it reacts, it triggers something on you, and you need to react. It's a loop, and you need to understand this in order to go further. It's, it's not only one-sided. Your story uh, need to trigger, needs to trigger uh, the user and in a predictable way. It's a little bit of psychology, and you need, know, you need to know a little bit of psychology to go further. It's impossible without us. And what? Ah, OK, it's not, it's not of me. Like, we understood this. We're speaking about something reciprocal. What's about storytelling? Storytelling is not about action in any case. Action is the result of a story. The story is mostly about the reason for action. All the whys, whens, they are the most important thing. 
And you need to build these questions in the head of your user. How do you do this? You know, the people are actually predictable, it's sad, uh, but it's like this. Uh, we, um, mm, we have a lot of cognitive um, biases. Who knows what's a cognitive bias? Yeah, good, a little bit more. Like a cognitive bias, like you know about the fair old cognitive bias. Like we think that karma exists. And you know, in our stories, all will be waiting for karma because we think karma exists. If your story doesn't have karma, it's something wrong about this. And it's not tied, it's not connected actually to, um, uh, to real life. It's connected to how our brain works, like the patterns from our brains. Like, if you try to do a story based on only on, uh, hey, uh, only on life and uh, real things, it would be a bad story. No one, uh, no one's waiting um, real uh, things. We, we are waiting for all the biases, and we are like 250 different biases. And we are waiting for them to see it in the story. All the patterns will be it needs to be there. And the second thing, I think the most important, are the people. The story without uh, a person, a real person, not a cardboard one, like not very simple, but with an arc and things like this, it will be very nice to have one to understand why the person need to be uh, to be changing okay and how it need to be changing and now it's yet a psychology again the granny old young with the archetypes some things like this and we are all uh, in the i don't know uh, in the greek archetypes and let's let's use them like uh, one good story is to go from the archetype of Aris, like warrior, uh, to the archetypes uh, archetype of Zeus. What will be the story? How the person uh, will change a warrior will change to become a big businessman, something like this, or. Maybe Gefest. Gefest is a programmer or a specialist. How he needs to be changed to become um, goddess. Goddess, you know? Who is goddess? Yeah. Good. What needs to be changed in the soul of a specialist or programmer or or a designer to become dark in the interior. And the most important thing, if he is goddess, who will be uh, his wife? What do you think? Yeah, what do you know about Persephone? Okay, good. You know a lot about Persephone. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, she, yes, she, she will be actually have a good relation with her mother. Yeah, very good relation with her mother. And uh, she will be very shallow. And things like this. And we are waiting for these stories. They are not like something, uh, even now, uh, in the real setting, we are waiting to see these Greek gods. I don't know why. Maybe we need new gods, but actually we are waiting for the world one. Good. Actually, for each slide, like uh, um, lecturing, I'm I have a lot, like 20 minutes, 
and I need to go faster because I have a lot of them for you today. Um, what you need to know about the, not the interactive story, but still the old kind of story, the linear psychological narrative, you need to do two things, to buy in audience, and it's now it's more like tropes, you know a lot of them, um, Cliff Kanger, a lot of them. But the most important thing is the willing suspension of disbelief. The user, the player, actually needs to be wanting to believe in your story. And all the problems like bad um, design I, or um, not so cool design and all these things are not important for this player. Why a player or a user actually can do this, this suspension of disbelief? Maybe you'll give him something very important in his setting, like I didn't saw nothing uh, in um, any kind of punk a lot of time. I'm waiting for this setting. And now, OK, your story can be like simple, but because of the setting, I'll forgive you all. You need to understand your user, why he's doing to do this suspense of disbelief, even the books. If I'm waiting for something, if I'm, if I'm waiting for some kind of arc, so some kind of uh, uh, tropes, I'm okay. I waiting. I don't need nothing more about this. Yeah. Uh, now we'll have a little bit of boring stuff, like for ten and fifteen minutes. Uh, why is what is important from my point of view to have a new story, like contingency, the connection between the story time space and real time space. How do you how do you look? How to do you change? Uh, how it's working? And mostly in contingency in the storytelling, you can have the Use it using of some patterns like uh, oh already okay I'll go faster I'll go faster um, the patterns like um, connections between uh, um, the cause eff cause and effect connections we need to have here the narrative representation the way representation I think the most important way of representation is the mental one. Like in the book. When you are reading the book, you are deconstructing the book, and you are creating in your mind, the user creating in his mind, the story from the beginning. And now you need to influence the story. Because the story is not in your computer. The story is not in your uh, book or uh, on the screen. The story is here. And you, if you can influence the story inside the mind of this guy or girl, you are God, actually. And this is what you need to do, actually. Because all of them will have different stories. Interactivity, now I don't need to say anything about interactivity. You, you know more about interactivity than me. But interactivity, one more time. It's not only the game's reaction to users' um, uh, inputs. It's a cycle. You need to trigger me to do something else. And you need to understand what is triggering me. This is important. And the presence, like immersivity, like how much I'm present here. It's also boring stuff. It's important. Um, it's a little bit old slide. Like in cinema, the contingency is slow, and the theater is medium. Uh, in the literature, is low. In games, is strong. Narrative representation is good. 
uh, in uh, cinema is visual, in theater is visual, in literature is mental, and in games is visual. But it's not like this. I know a little uh, bit of games where um, actually the representation is mental. Can you say me some examples? Absolutely right. But we have and visual games where it's the same. Um, like Minecraft. The real story in Minecraft, it's in my head. Like I'm explaining, I'm going to like I created a crystal castle, you flower, something like this. And in one moment, one creeper, and yeah, you understood the story. And the story is in my mind, it's a mental representation. And it's not about what actually happened. It's about why I'm what I'm remembering and why I'm remembering this. This is the real story. Um, the, yeah, uh, this, this slide is good only for one thing. Why in the theater and theater we, uh, we can have interactivity? Like, I need your help. Yeah, what you are doing, you do, woo, and go out, yeah, beating, yeah, you, you can do it actually in the theater. Um, it will be good to do it in cinema because like, most of the time like Barbie and things like this, it needs to be pushed a little bit. Okay, games, models of user engagement. Um, we have different degree of inter interactivity. Why this is important? Uh, because like, if you'll do a game, you are not, it's not only about games. We did a lot of interactive um, uh, installations. Uh, we helped some uh, vineyard uh, to do a big interactive installation with augmented reality on all these things and they um, like thrived and had a lot of money from this. But what you need to understand, if you have conventional audience, you can give them no interactivity. Uh, in film, you can give non-participant non control. What's the control in film? You can switch off and change, the, actually they change, uh, change the film. And, uh, but this is important. Why? Because he'll not be paying or she'll not be paying you more. This is also control. You want to um, give him or her an impulse to pay you. Non-participant influence. Uh, uh, theater, themes, and any kind of God simulation you have, where you're changing the environment, you're changing uh, the problems, and they need to be working. But non-participant influence is not only about games. You have a lot of TV shows using these kind of things. Participant control point is branching narrative. It's actually the most, like, you'll be speaking today about branching narrative a lot. I'll not be spending your time on this. E and fully participating interactive, like emergent narrative. This will be this will be what we'll be speaking about here. Good. What we did from here, like we what I'm doing like now. This is also interactive storytelling. Like I'm trying, I'm each time I'm um, seeking, I'm seeing this um, slide, each time I'm telling another story. But no, and now it's, it's, it's the same. You can do role-playing games, you can do improvisational TED, you, do, you can do tour guiding, you can do teaching, and you don't need actually, it's not only about game, it's about the way of thinking. When you have your target audience and you are playing with your target audience. But then you are doing like this is game 
it's a little bit more complicated because it raises at a meta level. You need to understand the patterns that will be used and actually put them in. It's a meta programming thing. This is actually, a, I don't know, a slide. I'm spending here one hour each time. It's a very simple slide, but it's, I think it's the most uh, important one here. The interactive storytelling actually have three part takers, three pillars. One, we are speaking like and with screenwriters and things like this, we are speaking only about this, but it's not like this. Yes, this is author, the author, and the author can do branching narratives, and we know all the problems of branching narrative, like exponential thing. You need to, to write a lot of story, actually, to be. We know the problem of telltales. What's the problem of telltales? Even the games are very, very good the quantity of uh, content that we need to be doing for each uh, new uh, part, it's so much, but it's not convenient from point of view uh, of money. Like it's not business uh, reliant. What to do here? How to do a good authoring? Um, give fake decisions? I don't think this is good. We'll speak a little bit later, because I think the answer is here. And we now have the possibility, like, there is quite good to handle these kind of characters. And actually, the end user. The end user is, um, actually, what do you think? What's the difference between a game and um, plaything and um, toy. Why the toy is important? Yep. Uh, yes, a toy is too simple to have rules, but it's not about this. Uh, yeah. What's a, what's a toy? Good, good. A toy, it's actually a ball, yeah? the most, the best toy ever. You can play hundreds of games with one good toy. And you cannot have a good game without a toy in it. The toy is so important because the player needs to be um, into your game. Like having a ball, uh, for me it's a knife, I don't need a like, I don't need anything. And if your world is actually, okay, thank you. If your world is actually a toy for the user and the user can play with uh, your world or the game world without even any rules because the toy is so good, this is very important. How do you do oh, this? Do this? Oh, good. I didn't do it on purpose, but yes, I, I just be small. <laughs> okay. How do you do this? How do you do a good um, toy world toy? Like maybe you know some of them, like Minecraft. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You have the freedom of action. The toy is simple. The toy is complicated at the same time. And you can have your rules. Seems. Of course. Of course. Good. These are sandboxes. Yeah. Good. Characters. Uh, like, I, I'm doing my PhD now, and I'm writing um, 
language of programming for AIs in my PhD. And there, um, I'm struggling with emotional um, characters. And my last paper, it's on uh, um, characters or agents speaking with themselves. This, just think of this. These things was the case or why the idea of interactive storytelling is actually alive. Uh, these things is actually because of the strikes in the United States now. Do you know about the strikes of the United States? Not only writing, now and the actors too. And actors. And why the actors have, uh, have problems? Uh, uh, yes, but it's not so important. Why AI? Absolutely, absolutely right. And this started back in 89, something, 1989, because day-to-day uh, -day the content is more expensive. Uh, if, like, 10 years ago, a AAA movie was like something, still hundreds of millions, now it's practically a billion. And... You cannot actually, in a small country, or in any country, do on yourself any kind of movie, any kind of type of content, because it's so fucking expensive. What do you do? Automate? Automation? And it's sad. But the actors, the screenwriters, will have to pay for all us because we are very expensive. And I'll say it's the same for programmers. I'm a programmer. Like A programmer now, after three years of, of university, uh, having biggest salaries, like a uh, doctor, after seven years of university and things like this. And it's not normal. And this will be automated too. Good. Getting back to our characters. These are actually AI, AI-based uh, agents, but uh, believable agents. What's the difference between um, intelligent agents and believable agents? You are actually wanting to uh, make the suspension of disbelief, speaking about these characters. Mm, uh, this one, it's not real, it's not realistic, uh, but it's believable. Like, I want some of this. And Donald Duck is believable. And the difference between them is what are we working now to find? How a character have a personality? How a character have emotions? What I'm doing with character for the emotion? I'm doing an artificial endocrine system. Like I'm putting them to have some hormones and putting them to have some, um, uh, some um, I don't know, uh, cognitive biases. I'm putting them to have some um, personality and uh, history. And history of interaction, when we are speaking about history of the characters, the most important history is the history of interaction between the player and the character. Like, if I stole my, uh, one, one time money from someone there, he needs to remember it and uh, try to attack me. But it has to be slow and slower, the memory need to be degradating, like all this is believable. And we need to start to work on this. And here, what kind of games do you have? Working with, what? Okay, good, good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. God simulator, all the God simulators are here. 
absolutely yes, thank you. Now, all together, we have something, I don't know how it's in English, and sorry, I don't know Ukrainian, but in Russian, it's Rosa Vitrov. Do you understand what's Rosa Vitrov? Yeah? Your game actually can contain all of this, like more of this, and a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And you'll create your own game based on the game, interactive story, because it's not only games are interactive. Yeah, this is, this is actually how it changed. You have on one part the sandbox, the life simulation is there, and you have interactive novella there. You can do it together and put a little bit more of this, a little bit less of this, and, and so, so. You need to understand, but it's not all your game. It's only the part of the story. You need to do your mechanics, of course. You need to do uh, your marketing, targets, and things like this, uh, game design even. It's, not, it's only about the story in your game, if you want to have one. And we need to understand where the story will be. We are actually under, like we can stay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have forms for interactive entertainment, script writing software, role play games, simulators. How many? Ah, I have only, oh, I have like uh, 20 minutes. And um, how you can use it? I'm using it all the day with my kids. And in art, we did in Kishinev uh, some interactive um, expo uh, at the National Museum of Art. We had like tens of thousands per day of, you, of uh, uh, people going on. And this was very interesting for them. Like, it's not only game, but it's so important but the story, okay, it's so important for you to story, to, to understand what the story can be a part. Education and guidance. Now, it's another slide. Uh, when I like, for if the students, I spend on this slide like 20, 30 minutes, uh, because what's the narrative thinking? The fundamental structure of the human experience and the autobiographical stories. Now, we started to speak about this, but where the story is, sorry, where the story is, it's on your computer, on your laptop, on something, but no. The story is actually in the head of your user. Now, how can we do something with this story? Because this is important. How we can change the story, but is not on any material thing. We can do only two things. One is used, uh, using the patterns that are, are already known like the cause effect. This is a bias like I hate the most uh, because, you know, if we have two events together, we, we are trying to find a cause effect uh, connection between them. And even if is nothing, we are trying to do it. In your story, all the things need to be tied we need to have cause effect. We cannot be like in real life, like, sorry, it's not working. After we are making a structure of the human experience, we need to feed with experience, step by step. Firstly, we'll give some uh, information, 
some experience. Um, we'll dump some information about the world, like, like we are doing all the time. Uh, and step by step, he'll be diving in this world and we'll uh, create new patterns the, for the mechanics, but we are speaking like with new mechanics, new patterns. And after, we'll start to feed him his information about himself and this world. He needs to have a relation, a deep personal relation with this world. And now, what's an autobiographical memory? He needs to un not to understand, to be tied with significant uh, events uh, from this world, but will mark him. And this is what we are giving. And always it's at meta level. Each user actually will have another story. Each user will have another thing here to, to, to speak about. For each user, the game will be different. Yeah, this is simple. We have a narrative immersion. It can be special, temporal, and emotional. Yeah, if here and here we are working, it's a mechanical things about emotional. I'm not so sure we understand right how to do an emotional immersion. This need to be worked about. And maybe now if this new AI, you could actually understand what's the state of emotional state of your user. It's good. It's good to do it. About the con conventional narrative, this is simple. You have an author, we have a constructed story, you have uh, the story presentation and spectator, and the experience story at the end. You are frightening me. Don't do this more. <laughs> okay. And you have the experience story at the end. And even here, you have some presented story, some constructed story, an experienced story, and these are three different things. The, in Eastern Europe, what uh, I was I were discussing a lot of um, guys from game dev, and not only, even for writers, they think about all this like one thing, and it's not actually. Uh, if you know about Derrida, like deconstruction, you need to, even here, uh, did someone of you read, uh, read like one book different time in, in, its life, in his life or her life? Yeah, good, good. And the book was different each time. Kinda. This is about deconstruction because like our, this is our story. Our story, what he, we found in uh, this structure of the book. And this is why you need like an author, like a um, game developer, think about this story. What the, this kid is experiencing, what this user is experiencing. And if interactive narrative is even worse, uh, like complicated, no, it's, it's good, but it's complicated. You have the author, you have some external events, you have our smart, smart characters, agents, and they are actually are generating the story. You are only like an author planting the seed of the story, uh, planting the seed of conflicts, like the simplest story here, we have some ants, like characters, two different ants, and what we are doing to have a conflict, we are not giving them enough resources. And we'll have a conflict like from the beginning. And this need to be forked. And even here, the generated story is not the experienced story. And this need to be understood. I have only five minutes. Yeah, 
another slide, like one hour slide. Uh, I'll go very fast. Uh, what's about what's interaction about? What would change? What you um, will permit to your user to change in your game? Why this is important? Because if it's changing too much, you'll have no drama. And the drama is most important in the story. Because now, now uh, if I want to choose between, will my wife die or not? I'll, I'll choose not to, but it's not dramatic. How to maintain your dramatic story and give the choices to the user? This is a good thing. What would stay the same? Some immovable things, and this is important. And how do you make such a thing? How you make these things not to change and this to change? And the most important for you, not for me, because I don't have this more, like this ego, where is the artist in the game? From my point of view, nowhere. The game is not for the artist to say something. It's my point of view. Uh, but I understand a lot of people want to be present, like an author, uh, like this game or this story uh, needs to be about themselves in some way. And I think some of you need to understand, not, not to understand, to make the choice. What you are doing is about what? Speaking about yourself or caring about your users. If you're a good host and you're caring about your users, you don't need to be so present in your game. You need to be a little bit servant and a little bit like, I don't know, uh, more absent in your story. The story needs to be not about you, but about your user. But it's to you to decide. Are you a good host? Or maybe you want to brag a little bit about you. It's a good, oh, I have zero minutes. Good. Uh, problems, challenges, R&D challenges. <laughs> But the most important, the narrative paradox. This is the most, impo most important slide. Like the pre authored plot structure conflicts with the freedom of action. And the freedom of action conflicts with the drama. And this is a paradox. This is why no one can actually um, make uh, continue, uh, make the same thing two times because the actual um, fail of the story is the fail of resolving this narrative paradox. It's not about something else, like or you give a lot of choices and you have no drama, or you have drama and not choices and it's a, not an interactive thing. And the success here is to resolve it. And each time it can be very small elements and you are not even understanding what worked. This is why a success from an interactive story cannot be replicated. Even the same actors, same, um, uh, I don't know, uh, all the crew is all the same, all the screenwriters are all the same, and you have no results. Because you, each time, need to be resolving this narrative paradox for this product. It's all. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe you have some questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You mentioned you creating AE characters and even wrote some yeah, yeah. Uh, papers on that. Uh, please say, what do you think are mo three most important parts of personality of AE created characters? 
From my point of view now, uh, the most important uh, part is, um, how to say it right, uh, the emotional part, the um, um, autobi autobiographical story, and what you say about um, personality. And what's personality, it's, um, it's a thing very important. Like, if you have only simple characters, uh, you put them from one environment in an another, and the characters start to behave different. And it's not right. The personality, it's like something that remains same in different relation, in different environments. Uh, how to do it? I'm using for this a little bit of psychology, like, yeah, mathematical based and things like this. Um, the NLP, do you know about NLP a little bit? They have the meta programs there. And I'm using the meta programs NLPs, like we are 20 of them. Uh, plus, I'm using the cognitive biases. Like, I give them some biases and for the emotion, I gave them like six different uh, hormones in order to, for them to change the emotional state. And the paper is about, I put uh, together like four characters, Plato, Socrates, Kant, and someone else, Aristotle, uh, to discuss about uh, the... Um, the reality, I think, <laughs> and um, the final, the decision was like, Plato is the best of them discussing about reality. Like they discussed, we put the problems, they started bragging about each other, and it was very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, good. Um, well, uh, you and like telling us about the interactive uh, storytelling, and um, can you give me an example of a game uh, in which the interactive storytelling that you think is the closest to perfect? Oh, good. Yeah. Um, from point of um, point of view, I think the from the character points is uh, something between um, Dwarf Fortress and um, uh, Rimworld. Uh, the uh, um, Quite, but the emotional part is not not there yet. I think we need to. It's a little bit uh, basic um, from point of view of uh, um, all tell tales is good, but I didn't saw it together yet. Sorry, but. Um, and the sandbox, the sandbox are good world, but it's simple to, uh, it's simpler to do a sandbox from Minecraft to the dark, uh, the long dark, they are good world. I, 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 but I cannot say you know, one game having all of this put together yet. Maybe it will be sometime. Thank you. Yes. So, you know how in uh, most stories, the basic, the skeleton is the character, uh, who they are, what do they want, why do they want it, and what's stopping them from achieving it. Can it be said that in interactive stories, you give, you as the author, give the users those skeletons, these skeleton, this basics, and then you give the users all the creativity to uh, tell, like, what the character is doing exactly like detailed like in that same minecraft scene that the character is stranded so the character wants to survive and what's happening them and all the monsters and the fact that they need to eat but uh, the user is the one who uh, tells how the character is survived am i understanding that correctly um, not only this but try you feel like a god yeah you are a god and you have a lot of users, and like we are users, and, and they are interacting between them. We are trying to make, to change the environment 
in order to the users to feel a little bit better. But we fight all, uh, it's most indirect, uh, it's a little bit more indirect for this, for these users to, uh, when behave. Like you are changing the environment and we are waiting for the user to change this beha his, its behavior, uh, to not user, uh, to character to change his behavior. Yeah. Uh, I think I said something. Okay. Uh, no, I think I understood. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Так, еще одна питаннячка, якщо є можливість задати. Я бажаю ще задати питання. Так. Thank you for the lecture. Thank you. Um, you've uh, touched the topic of uh, suspension of disbelief. Absolutely. And uh, I wanted to ask, mm, you know, uh, some games, they have like uh, micro transactions. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, those are famous for uh, disrupting the suspension of disbelief because they are they can be seen as sort of intrusion of the real world, real money into the um, this um, imagined uh, world of the game. <clears throat> uh, can you think about some maybe ways to facilitate this transition? Absolutely. Uh, through the narrative devices to make it more like smoother. Absolutely. And microtransactions are about actually monetization, the monetization of uh, pain. Yeah? Uh, you need to make the user so frustrated and give this like a possibility to go back in the story. Sorry, it's a bad, it's a bad thing to say, but actually uh, it's not about helping him to do something that first you need to make him or uh, her very frustrated and uh, put a paywall and after that uh, give a possibility to resolve this for money. Uh, sorry. <laughs> and you can do uh, him frustrated through his for story. Uh, if it's, I don't know, it's a drama, uh, it's... Um, like withdrawing some bits of lore, perhaps, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Так, е, гаразд. Останнє питання, тому що дуже коротко е, у нас. Uh, I wonder, so uh, if uh, there's like uh, the point of the story is to give some ideas to player, something to think of, food for thought, I mean, uh, isn't it like uh, contradicts uh, the idea like of freedom of action, like uh, do whatever uh, and why do you think the story is food for food? We have stories thousands, tens of thousands of years. It's not about food for food. The story actually appeared more like uh, a possibility to experience something. Mm -hmm. In a safe, like, sorry, we don't have all the lecture here, but the point of the story is actually to give you a possibility to experience some very negative uh, things in the world uh, in the safe um, environment. It's not about you thinking something. It's more about scaring you a little bit, not to do something. Like giving a bit of experience. And uh, my story is, uh, my um, slides are uh, about this. You give a possibility to have experience, uh, different experience in this world. And uh, actually we are doing this tens of thousands of years. Uh, just remember the story about the uh, red cap, like why she's going into the woods. Uh, you don't know? Uh, yeah, good, good. <laughs> Пані Панове, я від вашого імені дякую Василю Бразі за дуже такий креативний, дуже крутезний спіч. Це супер спікер. Я думаю, вам дуже сподобалось. Якщо у вас є ще запитання, можна задати йому, але вже в кулуарах наше 
гарної конференції. Зараз тут буквально через кілька хвилин почнеться наступний спіч наступного крутезного спікера. І ще раз хочу, щоб ви поаплодували. Пані Василю, дякую, дуже було круто. Дякую. Дякую вам, хлопці.